Hey everybody, welcome back to Life in the North 40. I'm Rick. We're taking about one more week uh, off before we get started again on our off-grid dry cabin build. I'm super excited uh, for all the views that we've had on that video. It was fun to make. We're super excited to get that cabin built I and mean, have a little dry cabin in a really beautiful spot here in the Rocky Mountains on our property down by that creek and those cedar trees. So we're excited that you're joining us for that. So this week we've picked out a couple things for that dry cabin that are huge and we're super excited about for the interior portion. Uh, and one is uh, our heating and cooking option, which is this, uh, this is actually a wall tent stove or a survival stove and it touts just over about a one foot cubic uh, burn box. But I measured this myself and it's about 14 and a half deep uh, for length of, of burnables or uh, fuel. 14 and a half deep and 11 and a quarter high. So it's a pretty decent sized burn box. Yeah, you can't put super long material in this. So you'd have to chop your stuff a little shorter. I got this stove here locally in Northern Idaho. Um, and I paid about 200 bucks after tax for this. And, and the reason I like this, several people uh, have done the Camp Chef uh, wall tent stove in their off-grid cabins and that's a great great item it actually has a longer burn box it's kind of a barrel style bottom with a flat top that you can cook on like this but it was longer and being that our cabin is only going to be 16 long by 10 uh, deep I thought you know why not have a shorter stove um, that takes up less space because um, we'll have to put a you know some corrugated metal in the corners to protect our our tongue and groove and stuff but this is going to give a shorter footprint so I'm excited about that this is a 160 square foot cabin this is definitely going to heat that no problem um, so it, this is very sturdy a lot thicker than the camp chef a lot heavier duty American made and just solid um, kind of like a real wood stove so that's another reason I love it so this is the Survivor camp stove, and it's actually made by England Stove Works. They make very high quality stuff. So this is a super nice item. And what we're gonna do today is we're gonna do a burn off. Before we can install this in the cabin, which we're a ways off, I thought since we're taking a break, it's gosh, rainy even today, um, I'm gonna do a burn off to, to burn off the primer and the paint on this. You don't wanna do that the first time in your cabin. And I'll put the first length of uh, six foot, um, or six inch uh, black pipe, stove pipe on this as well to do that. Um, but I got some accessories also. After I bought the stove, I saw their, their uh, owner's manual and their recommendation for some extra accessories that I thought were great items. One of the things they, they sell is the fire brick, which you can get this a lot of places and you could break it to the right size. And I could have paid a little less, but I was ordering other things. So I got their fire brick. That's the exact size for the base of the stove. And they, they tout that this really elongates the life of your stove by keeping fire brick in it and cleaning it out after each use. So I did get the fire brick. I also got leg extenders. These are the original legs that it came with, about that high. So uh, at that height in the cabin, when we choose to cook on this, we say we got our percolator coffee pot up here or whatever we're not gonna be bent over the whole time. I can literally have my frying pan here without hunkering over down this low. So I got the leg extensions. Oh, mommy's home. The dogs are excited. So those are a 26 total uh, length with the leg extensions. I also got this additional item, which is another accessory. It's a side shelf that mounts to the stove. And the cool thing about that is you can set stuff here and the heat, the radiant heat from the stove will keep it warm and or hot. Um, and you can take it off, do some cooling, cook more, whatever. So it's a nice accessory. And I know the Camp Chef has a side shelf too, but again, this is just a lot heavier duty. Um, and then another thing that I got here is they sell a collar for this that mounts in, has uh, metal, uh, self-sinking metal screws that you screw right into the stove top. And this is your um, collar for your stove pipe. It just had a hole, you know, before I had the collar on here. So I thought, obviously, a collar is a good buy. So I got all these accessories after the fact. So here also another thing I got here in the final accessory is I am, this is a four inch stove pipe. 
And so you want to run, you know, out of a cabin or something like that. You always want to use a six inch exhaust smoke stove pipe. So this is an increaser, not a reducer, an increaser that will take me from the four inches so I can run six inch pipe, which I'm going to install this today and put that first length of black pipe on here, as I stated, and a spark arrestor that I'm going to use later. So you get to see me assemble that. So pretty excited and uh, watch also for Brittany's uh, video and discussion and review of these cots that we got disco bed xls and man we got them for a smoking deal 80 bucks off on costco on sale and they're real heavy duty and they're multifaceted. they turn into a couch so we're going to put those in our cabin as well we're super excited all right well let's get putting this together one of the first things i need to do is get this fire brick installed so they gave me the right exact pieces to fit in here like a puzzle i guess if i can figure out their puzzle we'll see how these go to perfectly line the bottom and these not only will help to retain and distri uh, distribute your heat evenly but again the manual says the fire brick extends the life of the stove let's see how many times it takes me to figure this out oh, i thought they'd give me enough to fully cover this we'll see We'll see if it'll go under. There's some nuts or the uh, the bolts to go through, kind of create a little bit more of a gap, just like that. How many how many times does it take Rick to play a game of Tetris with fire brick and lose? That was painful. Anyway, I got them pieced in there. Okay, yeah. So that really does basically line the bottom. You can see here, you've got a nice pieced together fire brick base um, that's really gonna retain that heat, distribute the heat evenly. But we need to get our stove pipe together. Let's get that going. Okay, so what you see here is my makeshift uh, workbench called my tailgate. I ordered these uh, three foot runs of, actually these are four. There's three foot yeah so those are four footers i ordered three of these off amazon um probably way more than i need but uh then i find out locally they sell these for cheaper than what i paid on amazon at one of our lumber uh building supply stores and they're already crimped and put together for you well the ones i got are the old school deal you've got your slot your male and female in, and you gotta get that sheet metal bent around to get the tension off of it just like that, I had it started, and you gotta fish this in here. So you get to watch me struggle through that, paying the price for uh, buying it, this version. But anyway, it's like, it's good, good old school. So if we can get that started here. Cause it ain't easy. And I'm gonna have to reshape this sucker later. Cause I'll tell you what, that is not easy to get that to seat. Man, I guess it started to seat on its, on its own there, so let's see what happens here. All right, so now I had to get a piece of board to set this on so I don't trash this too bad. I'm a little uneven up here, so I got another board. I want to tap that down without bending it up too bad. Let's see if I can get that to made up a little better. Still quite not flush. Man, that thing kind of locked in on me. It's tight now, and I have to, once I round it out more, it's gonna tighten even more. I recommend buying the ones that are already put together. Um, and normally these are less expensive because you have to do this. But uh, I paid more on Amazon than local. So, it's kind of ticked about that. But. That looks like it kind of locks locked in pretty well here. So it's a little further back. I can see if I can squeeze that together. And then I'll just go ahead and round this out. There we go. And I do have an elbow that this pipe will go into this elbow wherever I find the best spot in the wall to come out. And um, I'll, put, I'll run this into a double walled pipe through the wall and then then we have another elbow to come off of that double walled pipe clearing the eaves and that will shoot the stove pipe up has to be above the uh, pitch of the roof line and uh, higher than that so that's how much i need 
So I'm gonna need the damper in here and I believe, what is that, 18 to 24 inches or something like that up. So I'll measure kind of that rough spot. I think maybe I'll go 24. And then I'm gonna drill my hole centered through this and install the damper now as well. Why not while we're doing this? I'm gonna go 28 inches up. Drop that one more time, I'll be a pro. So I found a big old machine screw that I have that'll fit through that diameter hole. Yeah, it should just go through and then I'm gonna make a dimple on the other side. That'll give me a good spot to drill my hole. So on the other side. So once I drop that plumb, I can tap that with my hammer. So what I'm trying to do here is I've drilled my holes, same diameter as the damper rod for the damper on the other side. So now I need to fish this inside the pipe and it's not completely round because we just assembled it ourselves. So this is the six inch diameter for the inside here. Then I got to line this up on the axis of those two holes and slide my pin in. Let's see how long it takes me. This is going to be embarrassing. It's going to be interesting to line this up. So. Hey, will you uh, give me a hand? My assistant showed up, Brittany. So I'm going to try to move that disc. You're going to have to look through this hole and see if I've lined it up. And then you're going to slide that pin through okay. those disc holes. Do you see the disc at all? This, I, you, your arm's not going to be long enough. And I can't see. I can get my shoulder in though. Okay. So you're going to want to try to have that line up. And then I'll be watching. Oh, okay, hold on. I see your thumbnail. Okay, we'll come back towards you. It's a little more, barely. Okay, come back towards you. I don't know. Away. Up, up. Can we feel it? Okay, my thumb's okay. right. Oh, are you on the whole, whole yep. part? Okay, so come back towards me. Okay, is it going through? Feel with your hand and make sure it goes through all of them. Man, you're good. You can hold it and do it from the top. Man, I couldn't do that. It's because your arm's too big. <laughs> You're making me look like a total boob. Okay, okay, I need to see if I can fish that in there. So, oh, there we go. Am I, are you feeling me coming yep. through there? Oh, wow. Okay, now. Hold on, hold on, hold on. There, we're good. That's what, now you need to fish, fish it through. Right, how many times are we going to do this? Up. Oh, there's something. That was your finger or what was that? Good job. There it is. Okay. There we go. Woohoo! This is what you get and you're muscling through this by yourself and then your wife, that's a nurse, shows up on scene and uh, with her tactile senses and hands uh, comes and just in her gymnastics background comes in and just gets this done like makes me look like a total boob but hey thanks to her we're ready so now we got to get this thing mounted onto our increaser so this is my increaser going from a four inch and we want to push this to a six inch pipe so that's what this is for, but I got to get this thing and it's a, you want it to be a snug fit and it just is about ready to go if I can line it up right, but it is a challenge. And I've got the one crimp spot here that, there we go. Yeah, and so that just snugs down. There is a bevel right there on the inside of that collar that sticks out. So it's perfectly round and then, but you gotta get that sheet metal to just skip over that bevel and then get that to get in there nice, snug and tight. Okay. We're gonna go with that. All right, so we have to fit that into this pipe now. It's going to be another little challenge. You always got to watch these too, so you don't cut yourself. You got to get kind of that metal to mate, and get over that little edge if I can. So once we get this on, I would normally put you know installation metal screws and install this permanently. But we're just doing this burn off today, and then I'm going to pull this right off. So I hope I could get this on here and not 
have to screw it in. It'd be snug and just stay on here while we do the burn without putting permanent screws in it. So, yeah, that's gonna be, unless we have some heavy winds. So for today, I'm not gonna run the spark arrester to do this burn off. I'm gonna make sure I monitor this. I'm here the entire time watching. It's really wet out as well. We, we don't have a burn ban and we have a lot of moisture. So we're gonna be fine to do our seasoning. One of our neighbors is, is actually burning slash today. Okay, we got that stove pipe on. We got the damper in. We got the increaser inside the collar. And that was a fun little experiment. Thankfully, today we're gonna just, once this is cooled off, disassemble this for later, but it will be seasoned and ready to install. At least this main inside portion. All right, so let's get our fire going. Yeah, I'm gonna make this easy on myself, I hope. Get some good paper. We have one of our homemade fire starters here. If you haven't seen that video, it's kind of a cute, fun video. Easy little project you can do with the kids or whatever, grandkids. Make these at home. They're a lot more cost effective than buying them pre-made, so. And this is stuff you have everyday items you can use. So we'll get that in here, but I'm gonna surround it with some paper. I'll see if I can not overstuff this. Um, see what kind of smaller wood I have to get going. And in the instruction manual for this stove, I read it said that it is designed to burn with this front door fully closed. It does have an airflow control on the front here that you can kind of shut the air coming in and out off, decreasing your burn, right? And preserving some heat. Uh, so you're going to bed, you can dampen it way down. We do have a damper up in the chimney, so we're gonna have to figure out b between those two where our sweet spot is today while we're prepping for this exciting off-grid cabin that we've always wanted to do. The whole family's involved, everybody's excited, and everybody, we're doing really well on that video. Thanks for watching, guys. All right, so I'm gonna get a little wood on here, and I think I got some pretty big stuff, actually kind of bigger stuff than maybe I want. But, you know, I'm a knuckle dragger, so we're gonna see what we can do here. See how this one goes. And see how you get bigger stuff in here than you think. And this is kind of a flatty. All right, that should be good. That's kind of packed in there. Hopefully we get enough airflow. Let's see if we can get that fire starter going too. Once that fire starter takes off, we'll know it. It should be good. We're gonna run a few cycles of wood through this to get it good and hot and get that burn box and all that paint burned off uh, before we install. So once I feel like that's going pretty well, we're gonna shut that door. We're gonna shut that door, but I'm gonna leave it max airflow coming in, which is there. I can see straight in, there's another main hole right into the firebox. These two hexed out areas and those two hexed out, so um, you, can, can shut, you can shut those down, one, half, whatever. You can open it fully up, so and it just goes right in. So up here we have our installed damper, and it kind of rests right about um, center mass where it's fully open naturally kind of a little off but uh you can kind of shut her down i was messing with it a little bit smoke basically shuts off i know i'm i'm really choking it down oh yeah that first load of wood is getting oh yeah i can hear that sizzle so this is my old percolator coffee pot Get some good airflow in there. Get that going good again. I'll shut that door and get that baby really, really hot. Pretty happy with this thing so far. Very sturdy. Everything about it, the, the uh, latch closure on it just really locks in. It's really solid iron. All these pieces are, they're not rinky dink. They're tight and they're solid. Um, just the door feels heavy, heavy duty. Double plated there with the asbestos ring or the fireproof ring. Got this little lip here too to catch some ashes and whatnot. A cooktop surface. Um, oh yeah, I'm starting to see it smoke on the outside. Uh, that's a good sign. Starting to cook some of that paint and some of that primer off. That's what we want. So that's going pretty well. I can feel the heat pretty good. Like I said, a cool day out here today. Uh, pretty cloudy, rainy on and off. So 
Thankfully, Brittany joined us. I'll tell you what, I was like a monkey over here wrestling this stove pipe until uh, the brains and the beauty showed up. Yeah, and, so I'm uh, kind of gross dirty. I just cleaned out our chick's little coop, so. They're getting big, huh? Yeah, I think two more weeks we're going to introduce them to the big chickens, so I can't wait for that. There are eight weeks yesterday. Yeah. I think, yeah, eight weeks, so they're Getting big. We want to do it, but we don't want the other big chickens to tear them up. I see a lot of the paint smoking, uh, really setting in and seasoning the paint actually. And I, I do have a hot spot. So I'm gonna let that go a little longer. So it's darkening up. So I had the coffee pot set there and I went to move it to see you know, how hot it was. And I lifted it up and just that little rotation scrape took some of the paint right off the top. But you know what, this is gonna be used, and that's cool. This is a memory. This is part of our exciting experience. This is gonna be something we see. Um, and there may be other marks over time we create, but this may be something we see and remember, you know, hey, this is when we started, we seasoned the stove, that kind of stuff. As we've been doing this, our neighbor's slash pile up the hill is like kicking ash. It's fallen on us, and I'm thinking, wow, this thing's really kicking, man. Our, our fireplace is putting out. Well, it's not this, it's his. Seeing this coffee pot and this, this camping cup that have been used so many times by us um, reminds me of how many breakfasts this is gonna maybe you know, give us, how many pots of coffee we're gonna make on this. So that's pretty cool, it's pretty exciting. And to see that first little patina on there kinda gets you a little misty. But this is pretty cool, man. This stove is gonna be great for this little cabin. Someone's flat as a pancake over there. One thing he's good at at nine years old is sleeping. Meanwhile, Murph, what you doing? Huh, handsome? Um, but, oh, somebody's getting a back scratch. Uh-huh, get it, he's, he's massaging himself. Yeah, get it, Murph, get him. Get him, Murph, get him, yeah. Yeah, scratch that back. Yeah, kind of like a cub bear. Well, everybody, thanks for joining us on this final piece here of the seasoning process of this new stove. It's pretty hot even to kneel next to. Um, we didn't put the coffee pot back on. I wanted to just season and season well, and boy, it's just darkened up where it was. So this thing is gonna get used and used well. So we're thankful you joined us on this video. We're thankful that you're excited about this stuff because we sure are too. And uh, be watching for Brittany to show this cot setup that we've got. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up, like, and subscribe to our channel. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.